Hey all, welcome to Share Trick. This is Raj here. Uh, this is today's Saturday edit. Our topic today is skinny labeling. Uh, if you haven't heard about that term, you're going to learn about it today. As genomic investors and pharma investors, we need to gather an understanding of industry norms and standards. Uh, this video aims to contribute towards that goal. Intrigued? <laughs> Let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Pharma companies invest millions of dollars in discovery of new molecules uh, for different ailments. Uh, this could also be uh, uh, therapies as well as uh, drugs of different kinds. This includes initial research, clinical trials, FDA approval costs, commercialization, etc. In some cases, there is the cost of IP, just like you pay uh, uh, IP cost for CRISPR uh, for using CRISPR Cas9 or something like that, and royalties to be paid for use of certain patents, etc. So it's a lot of cost that is incurred in developing a drug. A pharma company as a whole may have some failures at or before FDA approval, despite the best vetting process before putting a drug or therapy candidate into the pipeline, as a result of which all the costs incurred in a failed therapy or drug have to be recovered from the successful candidates. And most of you have seen in many of our genomic companies, there's a whole uh, list of uh, candidates in their pipeline at various stages of development. So imagine if one of them fails, all the cost that was incurred in one of those candidates that failed will have to be distributed into the ones that succeed. That's the reason why drugs become very expensive. Due to this, the basic patent term is 20 years from the date on which a patent application is filed. Uh, this allows the company exclusivity for marketing the drug for the first 20 years. The idea is to allow the pharma company to recover its costs during the 20 years of patent. This inevitably leads to the drug being expensive and available only from the company that holds the patent. As a result of this, medicines are expensive and governments are under political pressure to reduce prices. This led to an arrangement wherein other pharma companies can manufacture the same drug, let us call them generics. However, the condition is that generics can be marketed only for indications not covered under the original patent. Introducing generic alternatives is an effective intervention that consistently and substantially lowers prescription drug spending. However, this can be delayed when the brand name manufacturer sets up a, a thicket of patents that is numerous additional patents relating to features of the drug other than its active ingredient. Some of these patent covers the use of the drug for any additional food and drug administration approved indications called use patents, such as using the drug in a new uh, patient population, for instance, pediatric patients, or to treat a different disease with the same drug. For example, after its initial approval to treat patients with chronic myeloid leukemia uh, in uh, 2001, the drug imatinib received several subsequent FDA approvals to treat both new patient population, which is pediatric, as well as new diseases, gastrointestinal stromal uh, tumors. Since each patent lasts for 20 years, use patent that covers subsequent FDA approved uh, indications or patent populations could potentially delay generic entry for all indications uh, past the expiration of the original patents. When generics are forced to wait until all the patents in a thicket expire before entering the market, this results in higher prices for patients. Many uh, uh, drug companies have experts uh, who are able to create this thicket of patents uh, in order to retain exclusivity for the drug with the company. And this is where the skinny labeling comes in. Skinny labeling permits a generic manufacturer to seek approval for only the unpatented uses of the drug, allowing the generic to avoid any existing use uh, patents altogether instead of waiting until the expiration or attempting to invalidate them in a court as would normally be required by generic drug application. Now what this does is it forces the uh, pharmaceutical company which invented the drug in the first place to put all its patents together to run 20 years concurrently. Uh, otherwise a generic drug would come and uh, use an unpatented uh, uh, area of treatment for the same drug and uh, come in as a generic. The generic uh, version, if successful, is then able to avoid infringing existing pay, uh, uh, patents and is only approved for the unpatented uses. This also helps drive down drug prices. Now, we'll, let's get back into the main story now that I have given you the background. This story is rocking the generics industry and has got many people worried. 
uh, Teva, which is an Israeli company, has launched uh, its Coreg uh, generic in uh, two of the branded meds, three indication back in uh, 2007. Uh, these uh, indications belong to GlaxoSmithKline. Four years after that, the FDA told Teva to add the meds third indication for congestive heart failure, despite GSK holding a patent for that use through 2015. GSK sued in 2014, contending uh, Teva introduced doctors to prescribe its copycat for congestive heart failure, while Teva argued it was simply following the FDA instructions. In 2017, a jury sided with GSK and ordered Teva to pay $235 million uh, to GSK. Teva then convinced the district court to overturn the verdict, but an appeals court later on reversed that ruling and reinstated the original finding of infringement plus $325 million in damages. A U.S. appeals court ruled last year that Teva label for its generic version of GSK hard drug Coreg still induced doctors to infringe a GSK patent. Teva told the Supreme Court that the decision undermines a federal law meant to encourage low-cost generics and creates competition killing uncertainty that will hurt the U.S. healthcare system. We need to watch this space and see what happens here. Uh, the governments will also uh, probably take notice because if this ruling prevails, it may send a chill in the generics industry and would result in a political problem with regard to affordable medicines. Well, friends, that was the knowledge dump for today and the story for today. Now I have to go ahead and enjoy my Saturday. I hope you also have a great weekend. If you like this video, please do not hesitate to press the like button as it helps the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe and help us grow this channel. Thanks and bye for now.